Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. This video is going to show you how to find the midpoint between two points in 3D space in R3. The way to do this is almost exactly like you might have seen this in 2D space in an algebra or a pre-calculus class. We're just going to add a third coordinate to the process here. So here we've got two points we've labeled P and Q, our points. And remember that the midpoint is just the point that's located exactly halfway between them on the straight line that connects them. And really a midpoint is just halfway between them in each direction. So in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction now in three-dimensional space. So we'll just walk you through this common sense wise here, but for those who prefer a formula to work from, we'll go ahead and label the coordinates for our points so we can build that formula. So our point P, we're gonna label it as x1, y1, z1 for the coordinates of our first point P. And our second point Q, we'll say has coordinate x2, y2, z2. Now remember the way we find what is halfway between two numbers is to simply take the average of those two numbers. So in other words, we add those two numbers up and divide by two. So for the midpoint, we'll just average each coordinate with its partner from the other point. We'll work a few examples with you here. We're going to find the midpoint, our first one between the point P, which is 4, negative 1, 3, and the point Q, which is negative 2, 2, negative 8. I've got my formula down here if I want to think of it this way. So this is my first point P, so I'll think of this as x1, y1, and z1. And over here with point Q, which is my second point, I'll think of those as my second x value, my second y value, and my second z value, so x2, y2, z2. We'll go ahead and just use our formula here. So then our midpoint will simply be, we're going to average the x value, so x1 plus x2 divided by 2 would be 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2. Our y coordinate for the midpoint will be y1 plus y2 over 2, so that'll be negative 1 plus 2 over 2, and then our z coordinate will be z1 plus z2 divided by 2, which is 3 plus negative 8 here over 2. And so then we'll go ahead and see this is 4 minus 2, so that's 2 over 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is going to give us 1 over 2. And 3 plus negative 8, or 3 minus 8, will give us negative 5 over 2, and we should reduce any of these that we can. Uh, these halves over here, this y and z coordinate can't be reduced, but our 2 over 2 certainly can. So we'll go ahead and say that our midpoint then is going to be 1 comma 1 half comma negative 5 halves. So that is the point that is halfway between our points P and Q here. Taking a look at another example that contains some fraction action in it, we want to find the midpoint between P, which is the point 1 half 0, negative 5 6. So the 1 half is my x1, 0 is my y1, negative 5 over 6 is my z1. And for Q, which is our second point, negative 7 over 4 is our x2, 9 halves is our y2, and positive 3 is our z2. So our midpoint in this case, if we write out what we have here in the formula. Again, just averaging the x's, the y's, and the z's. So if we're averaging the x's, that will be 1 half plus negative 7 over 4 over 2. The y will be 0 plus 9 halves over 2. And the z will be negative 5 sixths plus 3 over 2. Two. So we'll need to do some common denominator stuff, I think, to add these together. Um, so giving myself a little bit of room here. So if I think of this, a common denominator would make this one-half into two-fourths. So we'll have two-fourths minus seven over four, and that'll be over two. And then here, this is really plus zero is just going to leave us with nine-halves there over two. And our z, if we think of this like three over one and multiply by six on the top and the bottom, then we'll have negative 5 over 6 plus 18 over 6 over 2. We'll go ahead and get negative 5 fourths over 2, comma 9 halves over 2 still. And here we'll have 13 over 6 over 2. And remember, dividing by 2, that's really the same as multiplying by 1 half, right? So with each of these 
Let's think of multiply by the reciprocal if that helps us instead. So we're really just multiplying the bottom of each by two, right? So in this case, then we'll get a midpoint of negative five over eight for the x coordinate. Our y coordinate will be positive nine over four. And our z coordinate then will be 13 over 12. So there's our midpoint between this version of p and q here. We'll show you one more that involves radicals. So if we have our midpoint between p, which is the point root two, comma four root seven, comma negative five root three, so this is my x1, y1, and z1. And q, our other point is five root two, comma three root seven, comma two root three, so that's our x2, y2, and z2. We want to find our midpoint. Again, just using this idea of taking the average that we have written down in the bottom right corner here. So if we do this, the nice thing about these roots is these I've at least made these uh, like terms. So I have root 2 plus 5 root 2 over 2. They're the same kind of root, right? They're both a root 2 term. So those are like terms. Here we have 4 root 7 plus 3 root 7 over 2, and then we have negative 5 root 3 plus 2 root 3 over 2 for our z coordinate of the midpoint. And if you think about here, just adding like terms, we have root 2 plus 5 root 2, that's like having a cat plus 5 cats, that's 6 cats, right? So this is really 6 root 2 on the top over 2. Here these are both root 7 terms, like terms, right? So 4 cats plus 3 cats, 4 root 7 plus 3 root 7 is 7 root 7s over 2. And then here negative 5 root 3 plus 2 root 3 would give us negative 3 root 3 over 2. We look for anything that we can reduce. We reduce only the outsides here. We can't reduce things inside a root with something that's outside of a root down below. So really the only thing that reduces here is 6 over 2. So our x-coordinate here we would say is just 3 root 2, because 6 divided by 2 is 3 on the outside here. The other things have to stay a fraction, so we'll leave the 7 root 7 over 2 and the negative 3 root 3 over 2 as well. All right, hopefully some of these examples have helped you figure out finding your midpoints in 3D space. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in our next video.